Welcome back. We'll now go over the basic operation of the NIO AFM. This tutorial is organized in five parts. Starting the lab session, preparing to image, imaging, finishing your lab session, and we conclude with a dire warning. Neither food nor drink are allowed in the laboratory. Make sure to sign the logbook as soon as you come in and check the parts list. If anything's missing, you don't want to be the one who's blamed for it. Report anything missing to me, Professor Burnham, immediately. As you prepare to image, there are five steps. Loading a probe, loading and positioning the sample, powering up, setting parameters, and approaching the sample. To load a probe, First, remove the side view camera here. There's a lens on the bottom. Please make sure to keep that clean. Then unlock the AFM. Here's how you unlock it. First, take the locking handle backwards. Then flip the scan head over. Where you'll be mounting the probe is in here. Then find the drop stop. It should be in the tool set. Place it over the scan head. The drop stop protects the detection system from anything falling into it as you change the probe. Then place the cantilever insertion tool in the hole. Take some tweezers and load your probe. Then remove the cantilever insertion tool such that the spring holds the probe tightly on the alignment chip. Take a good look at the three images on the bottom here. You want to make sure your probe has been placed on the alignment chip correctly. This one is correct. These two are not. Here in the middle, this probe is slightly tilted. Here on the right, this one is not even close to being in a good position. Mount your sample with some tweezers. You may position the sample with these positioning knobs. After you use one, turn it backwards one half turn. This disengages the sample from the mechanism and helps reduce noise. Likewise, after you have locked down the AFM, this shield here protects the cantilever from air currents and also helps reduce noise. Power up your software and hardware. This is the icon for the software. The hardware turns on with this button in the back of the AFM and you should watch for this window that the software and hardware are talking to each other. After powering up Choose Static Force, and then choose your cantilever from this drop-down list of cantilevers. Most of you will be using the CSC-17 for contact mode imaging, the simplest of all AFM modes. Then open the Wizard window, this one here, and fill out the information that pertains to your sample. The computer will choose the right parameters for you, and we're not going to talk about what exactly all these mean today, but the computer does a pretty good job of choosing the right parameters. There are several different ways of looking at your data. Let's choose the easiest ones to think about today. That means choosing scan forward on the left hand side, scan backward on the right hand side, and then raw data for these four drop down lists here. Also please note that the scales are given to you here on the axes as you might expect. And when your data comes in for your image the color scale will be here and dark means down and light means up. Here we have video views from the info pane. Choose this tab to see them. On the top we have 
two top views, on the bottom two side views. The differences between them have to do with the illumination levels. Left hand side is illumination low, right hand side is illumination high. When the illumination is low, you can see the laser on the cantilever. Here it's halfway along. Ideal position is at the end of the cantilever, but halfway along is okay. Having the illumination all the way up, it's easier to see where you are above the sample. Here, this distance between the tip and the sample might be on the order of a millimeter right now. And that's what I want you to do, is to shoot for about a millimeter of se separation between tip and sample before you start the approach. You'll see that better in the next pane. So the fast approach is with this advance button up at, on the, uh, the ribbon. Use that to come down to about a millimeter of separation between the tip and the sample. And by a millimeter, what I mean is I want you to look in here and look for the space between the, the scan head, the very end of the scan head, where you'll see a little dot of red laser light and the sample surface. When you have the millimeter left, then use this approach button here. Whereas the advance button is a click and hold, the approach button is just a click once. It then changes to moving and it will tell you when the approach is done. We'll cover six things in imaging. Starting and saving an image, moving the sample beneath the tip, sampler probe exchange, image processing, and further information. Here we have two images and two cross sections. On the left hand side, the cantilever is scanning from left to right in the forward direction. On the right hand side, from right to left in the backward direction. Those are the fast scan directions. The slow scan direction in this particular set of images, it's rastering from bottom to top. The sample is an accelerometer like the ones used in handsets for video games. After scanning bottom to top, the next scan will go top to bottom. The images are saved in the image gallery, which is one of the tabs of the info pane. Note that the two images we just took are recorded there. Please get in the habit of saving your images on your own space in the server. You can do that by right-clicking on your images and then using Save As. If you forget to save them in your own space, they might not be there when you come back next time. What if you want to move to another part of the sample? Please use Withdraw first before using the positioning knobs. On the right here, you can see two sets of video views. Here, the tip and sample are in contact. There's the cantilever, there's its shadow. Over here, this is what it looks like after withdrawing. Here's the cantilever, here's its shadow. If you have a rough surface, please also retract a little ways. That takes you even further back at a faster speed, then approach again. The Home button raises the scan head to its highest level. Please use it each time you change the sample or the probe. For image processing, you can use the Analysis tab of the NanoSurf software. An alternative that's popular, in part because it's open source, is Gridian. You can find introductory videos on YouTube about Gwydion. For further information, try the Help tab in the Info pane, in particular the NanoSurf NIO AFM operating instructions. Feel free to keep a copy on your own server space. 
as you finish your lab session, make sure to raise the scan head all the way and to remove your sample and probe. Please insert a practice probe or an old probe that you're willing to donate to the next person to in the whole probe holder. This keeps the alignment chip clean and the spring from bouncing around. Make a comment in the logbook. It could just be as simple as OK. If anything particular, peculiar, weird happened, please indicate what it was. And if you think it's serious, please report it to me, Professor Burnham, nab at wpi.edu. Take your things, leave everything else, close and lock all the doors to the lab as you leave. Here's that nasty warning I told you about. If you don't behave, then you lose your privileges. So what did we do today? We went over how to start your lab session, how to prepare to image, imaging itself, finishing your lab session, and I gave you my nasty warning. Despite that, I hope you have fun. Bye-bye now.